Here's my top five things I always talk to sellers about doing before they're selling their house. So inevitably the first question I get when I walk in and they're showing me around the house is, do I need to fix this? Oh, by the way, that's broken. Do I need to fix that? I'm like, whoa, 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 hold up. Let's go through, let's assess, and then we'll take these one by one, right? So first thing is working essentials. I always talk about that. So, and I, a lot of times I equate it to buying a used car, right? So if you were going shopping for a used car, what are the essentials? One, it's gotta get you from point A to point B. For houses, it's gotta be a safe roof over your head, right? Is it a safe, livable place? Are they gonna get rain in? Are people gonna walk in? So securing the property, if you have doors that don't lock, if you have a roof that leaks, I call it the working essentials, okay? Um, HVAC systems need to function. Um, all of your sinks and your toilets need to function. The floor shouldn't have holes in it. The ceiling shouldn't have holes in it, okay? Because when you don't have working essentials, you almost automatically knock yourself down into this investor-only tier. And that, a lot of times, is the easiest way to get more money and more proceeds for your property, is to make sure that all of your essentials are working, okay? Now, for some people, that doesn't make sense to do because one, they don't have the money, they don't have the time, they just wanna be out. Or maybe it's an estate situation, you don't wanna fix up a house, you just wanna get rid of it, cool realize you will probably put yourself with those investor shoppers, people that like to flip property, hold on to them and rent them, wholesalers, those kinds of things. There are places and there are clients where that makes sense for them to be. But for most people, they're usually asking, hey, like I have a, a client right now that's like, the HVAC system doesn't work. Should we sell it as is or should we fix it? I'm like, cool, let's look at the numbers. How much is it gonna cost to fix it? How much more do you think you can get for the property? Um, versus leaving it as is, and now we're having those investor shoppers because most people don't wanna have to put ten or $15,000 into an HVAC system just to live in the house they just bought, okay? <laughs> Some people will do that if you're offering it as a credit or maybe, you know, hey, we'll have it done before closing. Um, but most people, when they're buying something, they're buying it to live in it, okay? If they're not, then they're an investor and that's gonna put you in a different tier for your proceeds. So make sure your essentials are working. Your All of your plumbing works, all of your electrical works, all of your HVAC system or mechanical systems work. Make sure the roof is solid. Make sure you can secure the property. You don't have broken windows. You don't have leaky roofs, all of those kinds of things, okay? That's kind of the base tier when we're talking about most people selling their home to on the open market to most buyers, all right? Like I said, there's other situations where it may or may not make sense, but that's for most people. So start with one, working essentials. Two, sorry, I'm looking down at my list so I stay on track for y'all. Um, what's broken? So inevitably, there's always something in a house that needs fixing. Even with my super, you know, type A sellers, um, my engineer, my IT, my programmers, my super, hey, I want everything to be perfect, they still have this list of, oh, I need to do this, this, and this. Because with home ownership, there's, it's never done. <laughs> it's just never done. There's always something, right? There's perks to home ownership. There's definitely cons to it as well. And that's a lot of time, the con is there's always something to fix. So what's broken? Now the question becomes, does it make sense to fix what's broken? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is interviewing agents. And that really helps address what you have to fix because that can be on a case by case basis. If it is a 1950s home and there's one outlet that is not a GFCI outlet, but you've rewired the entire house, then okay, maybe it doesn't make sense to do that based on the market condition. Maybe you want to because it's a cheap and easy thing to do. So then there's nothing left. But all those obvious things, your honeydew list, your handyman list, your to-do list, you're like, oh crap, I forgot about that. This faucet leaks, whatever. Just because they're working, if they're bro like, what's broken, but it's not an essential item, that's kind of the next tier to look at a case-by-case -case basis of what to see what we want to do with, okay? So um, the next thing is what I usually say, I say use your buyer's eyes, right? So imagine you were the buyer walking through your home or walking so through somebody else's home that's like this, what would you see? Because chances are, if you're selling a house, you're probably buying something else or you just did. A lot of people don't equate to oh, hey, I just bought a home and I asked the seller for all these things, but I'm selling my home and I don't wanna do any of that. Okay, well, your buyer is probably gonna have a lot of the same thoughts. So walk through your house. If you don't, if it, you can't do this unbiased, like if you just can't separate it, have a neighbor do it, have a friend do it, 
right? Have your agent do it. Another reason to have an agent come to the property because we're going to see these things with buyer's eyes because we're out with, we're out with buyers all the time. So we know those common things that they're going to ask questions about or they're going to ask for an inspection. Um, the other thing you can do is use an inspector's eyes. That starts to get, depending on the market condition, it may or may not make sense. Um, but maybe you know that the furnace is really nasty. It's not broken. It works fine. But you know it's nasty because you haven't had it clean since you moved into the home 10 years ago and you have three big dogs. Okay, chances are a buyer's going to ask about that, especially after an inspector looks at it. It doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. It just means prepare yourself and set an expectation of, okay, given what my agent says the market condition is, what do they recommend? Ask those questions to your agent. Um, personally, I love helping with those things. I love doing a room-by-room -room checklist of, hey, I think this makes sense. It's a high ROI item. Um, maybe you're missing a globe on one of the bathroom fixtures. Does a fixture work? Yes. Are all your lights work? Yes. But it's kind of that honey-do list of, well, do we do something about it or not, right? So look for those what's broken, lingering items that you're like, oh, yeah, I've been meaning to do that and I never did, and ask your agent about those things. Um, or just set yourself a budget and say, hey, we're going to set a $500 handyman budget or $700, whatever we can have somebody come in and do in a couple of days. We're just going to knock out because it's that many less things they're going to ask for. And it will also deter, reduce your buyer um, deterrent. So we'll talk about that in a minute. It makes a little bit more sense when the agents go through. Um, cosmetic upgrades. So I guess this is number four. When you work your way through that list, and I'm kind of doing this in order except for the agent piece. You know, fix the essentials, um, what's broken, use the buyer eyes of the things they're gonna look for, and then cosmetic upgrades. Do we repaint inside? Do we upgrade light fixtures? Do we upgrade the appliances? Um, do I need to replace the dead sod in the lawn? What, all of these things, okay? And that's where agents really, really help. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it out there. Number five is interview your agents. <laughs> a lot of time people wait until they're like ready to go on the market and they've done all this stuff and then they'll come and be like, oh, we did this and this and this and this and this. And I'm like, awesome. And the last thing I'm gonna tell them is like, you just wasted $5,000 doing that. Because a lot of times, <laughs> sometimes that's really what it is. And I never wanna be the bearer of bad news when someone says, oh, we just put all new windows in the home and spent $25,000 on that. And I'm like, cool, were any of the other ones broken? No, but we figured it was a good thing to do. Okay, great, the ROI on window replacements when you're selling your home is really low most times, unless they are not functional or broken. So don't waste your money, right? I don't wanna waste your money. I don't wanna have you spend money on things that doesn't make sense. So when you're looking at those cosmetic upgrades, and I'll link to some videos up above and down below, because I have lots of videos on this and I'm shooting more and more as I'm walking through with sellers and making recommendations on these things, because I realize this is what y'all are asking about. Like, what do I do? Do I, do I paint this? Do I do the light fixture? I was just going to do this. Cool, if you're gonna do that, then if you do these three other things, it makes a much better ROI as a package than it does to just do the one thing. Okay, or don't do that, spend the money here instead because that will be a better return on your money. That's what buyers are looking for. That's what your target buyer for this type of property is looking for. And that's a lot of what we're gonna evaluate your, your repairs or your recommendations on is who's your most likely buyer or buyers, call them avatars, call them buyer profiles, whatever you want, right? So if you have a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, single family home in a neighborhood that has amazing schools and amazing HOA amenities. And your most likely buyer is a family with young kids that it's either their first or second home or something like that. Then they're not going to have $15,000 to put into an AC and they're probably not going to want to upgrade all of the flooring in the home. Okay. So maybe that's where we use our money and our budget. Um, maybe you need recommendations on contractors that can make those updates and then get paid out of closing. Maybe you're like, I just want to be done. And I'm like, cool, then let's not do all this. But you realize you're not going to get as much money if you don't do it. And that's fine too, because your goals are what's most important, okay? Accomplishing your goals in the process of the sale. So anyway, those are my top five things. I'll just recap them real quick. Um, obviously, make sure the home has working essentials. Mechanical, electrical, plumbing, structural. I didn't really go into structural. That's a whole different thing. Um, what's broken? So are there broken windows? Are there other broken items in the home? Are there things that you know that have needed to be done? Um, sorry, I just got a text. I got a little distracted because it popped up on my phone. So what's broken that you need to fix? Go ahead and knock those things out if it makes sense to do based on your agent recommendations, okay? Um, using buyer eyes, walking through the home and seeing what's the buyer gonna see. Have your neighbor do this, have a friend do this, be like, hey, 
you know, because chances are you're going to tell them you're selling your house anyway, because they're going to want to know. So say, hey, I'd love for you to go through the home and look and just kind of give me your honest feedback. I, I can't, maybe you say, I can't budget to fix everything, but I'd love to know if you were buying the home, what sticks out to you, right? Um, those cosmetic upgrades based on agent recommendations, high ROI upgrades, if that's what your goal is, is to make some, make some upgrades and get better proceeds out of the property. And then interviewing your agents because they can help you with all of those things as far as making that to-do list and not wasting your time and not wasting your money on things that don't matter. So anyway, if you'd like to interview me to help you buy or sell here in the Denver metro area, my contact information is down below. If there were some things on your list, on this list that you're like, crap, I never thought of that, or okay, cool, now I'm not gonna waste time on things that don't matter, hit the like button, please. That'll really help other people find it. And that helps other people get answers to the same questions. As always, feel free to reach out to me if you have any other questions. And thanks so much for the time and have a great day.